can't get enough Mordecai and Rigby, us either. So we're back with another set of awesome homages paid by the gang at regular show. Cause what's art without inspiration, right Mordecai? Hi everyone, I'm Justin with Channel Frederator and when life gets you down, it's time to slap yourself and check out some more awesome pop culture shoutouts. This is more regular show references. <laughs> The team behind Regular Show must have a thing for jumps and frights because its references to horror movies are numerous. Horror movies in general enter the world of Regular Show in the season 2 premiere, Elo Governor, when the possessed car villain in a horror movie that Rigby rents from the video store proves to be a real threat. Eh, sort of. Later on in season 2, the episode Grave Sites is another love letter to horror movies and includes a bunch of references to landmarks of the genre. At the beginning of the episode, Mordecai tries to rent an Italian horror movie called Libraria, which is very similar in name to the 70s Italian horror film Suspiria, which doesn't take place in a library, but does take place in a school. The movie they do rent, Zombocalypse, the 3D director's cut, specifically stars a character who bears a close resemblance to Bruce Campbell's character in the Evil Dead trilogy, Ash Williams. The character even has the signature Boomstick, which if you haven't seen Army of Darkness, is just a funny name for a shotgun. Also in the Halloween episode, Terror Tales of the Park 5, the puppet character, Mr. Bossman, is pretty much Slappy the Dummy from the Goosebumps series, which okay, you know, are books, but horrific nonetheless. When I was a young kid, I used to collect Goosebumps books, and I remember having that specific one I couldn't even look at. I had to shove it away in a drawer. In Season 8 episode, the Dream Warriors title is a reference to the Nightmare on Elm Street sequel, Dream Warriors. Its plot involves Pops' nightmares and the voice of the episode's villain, Anti-Pops, provided by Robert England, who plays the Nightmare Slasher himself, Freddy Krueger. Pretty neat. The fact that the creators of Regular Show paid homage to a genre of film that was popular in the 70s and 80s is probably about as surprising by now as finding out that the next Avengers movie will have more superheroes in it than the last one. Regular Show has a bunch of references to old martial arts movies and they'll totally kick you in the butt, yeah, metaphorically. In the episode, Stick Hockey, for example, Mordecai Rigby and Benson face off against a skilled hockey player named Chong, who closely resembles the villain of the 1989 martial arts movie, Kickboxer. The final Stick Hockey battle takes place on a circular arena surrounded by flames, which is also similar to the arena of the final fight in Kickboxer, complete with a matching East Asian soundtrack transitioning into triumphant 80s guitar as the fight continues. Additionally, the episode Fortune Cookie in Season 3 contains a couple of references to the 1986 film Big Trouble in Little China, from its Chinese restaurant setting in the beginning of the episode to a warlock character designed to look similar to the movie's villain, David Lo Pan. They even got James Hong, who played Lo Pan in the movie, to do the voice of the warlock character, though the addition of a fanny pack to the character was totally all regular show. But, you know, I'm not complaining. Fanny packs are undeniably hilarious. Throughout the unnamed city where regular show takes place are a number of retail stores because what's a metropolitan center without a healthy dose of capitalism? Many of these stores bear a close, if slightly exaggerated, resemblance to retail chains in the world of non-animated real-life humans. That's us. In the episode Cool Bikes, Mordecai and Rigby decide to up their cool game and make repeated trips to a store called Das Coolest to buy some hip clothes. From the hipster stereotype behind the register to the statement pieces that they buy there, this appears to be their world's version of an urban outfitters. The superstore Buck Mart from the season 5 Thanksgiving special is their world's version of Walmart and Outdoors and Moors, which appears in Tent Trouble and Season 6's White Elephant Gift Exchange, is like their REI, down to its sleek but somehow still outdoorsy exterior. These are just two of many examples, but one in particular stands out from the rest. In the episode Bet to be Blonde, Mordecai meets up with some blonde dudes, watch the episode to learn the totally crazy reason why he does, to get outfitted for a sport jacket at a department store called Mervington's. This is similar in name to the store Mervin's, which has since gone out of business, and also Burlington's, which you guessed it, is a coat store. Though that one is all around at least, but my guess is the reference will outlive the reality. You might be tired of hearing about Twin Peaks by now. Since its return in 2017, it's become one of those shows that people just can't stop talking about. This early paragon of weird TV must have been an influence on the similarly weird, misleadingly named regular show because it's been referenced a few times throughout the series. The mall in regular show is first and foremost a reference to the Twin Peaks mall in Back to the Future, sharing a similar logo and even matching the time shown in an exterior shot of the mall from the classic 1985 film. However, Twin Peaks becomes two peaks in the show, which may seem like a potential coincidence rather than a deliberate Twin Peaks reference if it weren't for what I'm about to tell you. The season 6 episode Lunch Break includes a story made up by Mordecai and Rigby where their futuristic counterparts chase after a giant sandwich. Definitely check out this episode for the totally crazy reason why, and at one point they follow him into the instantly recognizable Red Room located in the Black Lodge that's central to the story of Twin Peaks. 
The room is recognizable by its red curtain, floor design, and general magical powers. If you didn't know, what the Black Lodge is, uh, it's, it's really hard to explain or even understand. Look, I'll, I'll admit it, Twin Peaks really doesn't make a lot of sense, but moving on. J.G. Quintel has said in an interview that Wes Anderson's 1998 film Rushmore would be his desert island movie, so following the logic that regular show pretty much references everything the creators like, you'd expect a number of solid Rushmore references throughout the show. And you know what? You'd be right. First and foremost, the high school Mordecai and Rigby are shown to have attended in flashbacks is called West Anderson High. One of the other students at the school shown in regular show the movie is named Willie Schwartzman, which could possibly be a reference to Rushmore star Jason Schwartzman. You be the judge. In the episode More Smarter in season two, Rigby fantasizes about solving what his high school teacher calls quite possibly the hardest math problem in the world to the delight of his imagined classmates. The sequence directly mimics the opening scene of Rushmore down to its soundtrack. Fun fact, Mark Mothersbaugh, the dude from Devo, also did the score for Rushmore, meaning that he had to parody his own song for this scene. While the escape scene from Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark might be more commonly parodied, regular show gives a nod to a great scene from Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade in the episode Excellent. Rigby enters an eating contest to win a hat that says I'm excellent on it. In order to do so, he must eat a 12 egg omelet, but the waiter warns against it. Unfortunately, Rigby is allergic to eggs, so Mordecai must complete the challenge for him. After some rigorous training, Mordecai completes the omelet challenge, but finds himself transported to a strange room filled with hats after he finishes. In that room, Mordecai finds an old knight guarding the room who orders him to pick a hat, but also tells him to be careful because the wrong hat will kill him. This is a direct parody to the Holy Grail scene in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where Indy remembers that Jesus, being a carpenter, would have had a modest plain cup and chooses the Holy Grail wisely. Mordecai remembers what Rigby told him about the hats and selects the simple net hat because truckers, quote, wear them all the time, thus choosing excellently. A long time ago in a high school far, far away is how the episode Skip's story starts, which details Skip's backstory. It obviously spoofs the beginning intro of Star Wars, and on top of that, Skip's is voiced by Mark Hamill, veteran voice actor and Jedi. This is one of the rare Star Wars references in the show, which is strange because you'd think there'd be some more Han and Chewbacca adventure parodies with Mordecai and Rigby around. Although, there is a sneaky little reference to Empire Strikes Back nestled in the episode Prank Callers, where Rigby and Mordecai battle against the master prank caller who is part man and part giant cell phone machine. In the end, Mordecai and Rigby, with the help of their friends, overpower the prankster and power him down. His face is revealed and shares a striking resemblance to the dying Darth Vader once he's unmasked. But unlike Vader, who tells Luke it's too late for him, the prankster asks not to be left behind. And the episode ends with Mordecai and Rigby and the prankster having some fun together. Ah, You know, thinking about this now, maybe Luke should have double checked things with his dad before throwing him over the pyre. Imagine all the prank calls they could have shared. Once again, I'm Justin with Channel Frederator and thanks for watching more regular show references. Which one's your favorite? Did we miss any? Comment down below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad as we have new videos dropping every day. So make sure to subscribe to Channel Frederator, your cartoon central on the internet, and never forget, Frederator loves you.